Sky Hackathon project, we decided to use Azure since it has a multitude of AI tools that you can use. Um, and we ended up choosing the Azure Cognitive Services. Um, in here, we chose Vision and Custom Vision. So with the Custom Vision AI toolkit that Azure provides, you can basically train a model to find things inside of an image. And the idea that we had was that we would be supplying images to the trained AI and try to see if we can get that AI to recognize spheres, uh, watermelons specifically, in images. Um, but as you'll see, sort of, I'll, I'll talk about the details of how we made that happen uh, shortly. So once we created an account with Azure and stuff, um, reading through the documentations, we found that all you really need to do is upload a whole bunch of images and tag certain things in those images that you want the AI to find. So for us, we wanted to find spheres. However, very quickly we, we noticed that, you know, a sphere is only a circle in an image if the sphere is truly a sphere. If the sphere is actually sort of elongated or if a circle is the thing that we're looking for, then most likely the image is not going to show a circle. It instead is going to show an ellipse because it's actually tilted relative to the camera. Uh, so when we first started off, we just uploaded a whole bunch of images and to get the AI search engine to work, after you upload each image, you have to sort of draw a box around the thing that you want the AI to be able to recognize. So here I drew this box around the pumpkin, said this is a sphere, and drew a thing around the lemon and said, okay, yeah, that's sort of a sphere as well. So make sure you're able to find those two things. And you had to do that for every single image that you upload. Um, once you've trained it a few times, uh, you can get this process going sort of more automatically. But initially when you're just starting off, you've got to tag everything manually. Uh, so it created two categories, disks and spheres. Spheres being things that are actual spherical in nature, disks being everything else. Something that is circular, but not necessarily a sphere. So for instance, like the top of this coffee cup could be considered a disk. Uh, uh, this plate over here would be considered a disk and so on. So um, we uploaded a bunch of images and then we trained the data on it. So each time we, we went through an iteration, we would upload new images, give the training more things to look at, and we'd have to tag more things. So let me take a look at uh, performance here. Uh, after the very first iteration of uploading images, you can see here we had 53 things tagged as spheres and 42 things tagged as disks. And after training it, uh, I think this took maybe like an hour or so of, of training time, but it took way longer to you know categorize these things to be either spheres or disks and where in specific image. So then you get a result set here from Azure telling you sort of how precise, how well is it able to recall in this other thing M app. So the precision basically is the number that, the, this number tells you whether the tag being the sphere or the disc is predicted by the AI model and how likely is it to be correct. So you want this to be, you know, 99% or high, high, a high percentage to give you the correct uh, results from the AI. Recall is basically out of the tags, which should be predicted correctly, what percentage did, the, did our AI model correctly find? So again, uh, you want this to be a you know high percentage. And then the, the final number here is just uh, the overall object detection performance across all the tags. So we have the sphere, which has a precision and a recall, and then a disk, which has a precision and recall. So after the first set of data, we see the precision on disks was only around 50%, where spheres was like 78%, but we had very few images. So I was actually quite surprised on how well this AI thought it could recognize these things based on this small set of images. So then we went through, generated more images. So now we can see we got 69 and 44. And the precision went up from you know 61.8 up to 66.7. We did another round, more images. Now we got 216 and 127. Precision went up higher iteration five higher still 
iteration six, we fell down a little bit because um, you'll notice that there was a quite a big jump between spheres here. So spheres originally had 127 tags, but in the next iteration we went to 243 tags. So we gave it a lot more data, um, but now the AI started recognizing, oh no, no, I, I really don't understand what a sphere is because this other data that I'm giving it is contradicting what it thought a sphere was. So anyway, um, going through here, uh, after eight iterations, we saw that we got like 90% of precision in being able to find spheres and 87% uh, precision in finding disks, which I thought was really good. Then we started running real world tests. So anytime you train data, you, you give it a whole bunch of images, you train it, and the results that it's given you in these percentages are based on those images that you gave it. So if you want to really know how well this works, you got to test it against images that your AI has never seen before. When we actually started playing it with it, then we could start finding, you know, holes in the AI in that it couldn't actually recognize things that it thought were spheres. Uh, or it would recognize things that are spheres as disks and vice versa. Uh, the other interesting thing here is uh, when you do train, there's sort of this domain that you have to specify, um, and that sort of t determines how accurate this thing can be when running on either a device or on a desktop, on a server, things like that. So these initial iterations were based on something called the general domain. But then I wanted to see, well, what happens when we generate an AI based on a compact domain? And a compact domain is specifically designed to run on a phone or a mobile device rather than like a data center server. So using basically the exact same data sets for images, um, we trained it using the general compact domain and you'll notice that the accuracy dropped down drastically. So that was really interesting to notice uh, when we're doing all the training. Um, now let me show you sort of a live demo of this. What we're going to do is we're going to click on choose to capture an image and what that's going to do on my device is it's going to uh, show my camera. So I'm in my kitchen here. I'm just going to take a photo of the scene on my table and say yes. Now this image is getting uploaded to the Azure service and it's going to analyze the image based on the algorithm that was trained and it's going to try to circle anything that it finds that is either uh, circular or spherical. So right now it's saying that it could find three things. Um, the cantaloupe is the 97% probability that it's considered a disk. It actually should be a sphere. Um, the top of the cup is also 95% and one of the apples. So I'm going to do this again, but this time I'm going to just move over to a different camera angle, like say here, and take this photo and let's see how well it can recognize things now. Yeah, so this time it didn't find any of the apples, still thinks that the cantaloupe is 96% a disc and the top of the cup it thinks it's a disc, which that's the way it was trained in the training data. So that was a demo on my phone. Um, you can hit that same website on a browser on a desktop as well. Again, I, I forgot to talk about this. The threshold basically determines when it captures how accurate it should consider something before it displays a result. So for instance, let me just drop this down to like 2%, which means anything higher than 2% that I recognize, it's gonna uh, highlight in the image. So I'm going to choose the image here of some watermelons. Now, one thing to note is in the training data, we didn't really have watermelon images. We had images of balls, you know, soccer balls, spheres, things like that. But we didn't train specifically on watermelons because I didn't want to taint the data with uh, sort of invalid results. So now let's take a look to see what happens when it runs on this photo. So you'll notice that it recognizes a whole bunch of things as, as spheres, however the percentages are really low. So if I crank this up to 18%, notice that this thing, it was 73% sure it was a sphere. This one 45%, 24%, 41%, and this one 87%. Everything else, it doesn't think is a sphere at all. 
which is really interesting. So, you know, normally you'd want this threshold to be pretty high, like I want 80% or higher accuracy. So out of all of those watermelons, it only thinks this one in the bottom left hand corner is a sphere. Everything else it's not considering a sphere. However, notice what happens if I choose an image that is similar to the train data set. So I'm just going to go on to Google here and type in balls, uh, balls and go under images. So here's a whole bunch of images of different kinds of balls. These are the kind of images we were using for training and I'll just grab this one from Wikipedia. So let's grab this one. Uh, and let's just grab uh, something not too big. Let's grab this version. Gonna save it. Okay, and then go back to over here, and this time we're going to choose that ball image. So now, oh, so now notice that the image itself actually it scaled it a little poorly. So let me try that again. I didn't spend very much time in the actual implementation of this website. I just wanted to get the AI running. So now we can see based on these images, it's able to see that this big ball is 96% probability that it's a sphere. This one's 96, 99%, 99%. This one, which is partially covered, is actually still 72%, which is quite high. So, you know, crank this up to the 80 some odd percent threshold out of this image it is able to recognize most of the balls and say that they are actual spheres so overall that's how our ai project went we were able to train it to recognize spheres and disks as well all in about two days worth of work